Yeah. Hey, y'all ready for a message from the Lord? Woo, Father God, we thank you for your presence, and we thank you for the series on nine secrets of healthy relationships, Lord. So we just ask you to, you showed us yet last, last week about love, and now, Lord, we just ask you to touch us today, that we leave changed for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Nine secrets of healthy relationships, um, which is the fruit of the Spirit. The same scriptures for the last three weeks or two weeks and for the next few weeks is Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Amen. King James says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And then the New Living Translation really rings a bell because it says, but when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, he will produce this kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and mm, self-control. Here there is no conflict with the law amen. amen so we did love last week so part three of this series is on joy amen, amen. and I, I i said it i don't know if i did it both weeks but again when a pastor talk, starts talking about relationships people get uncomfortable they would rather you did hell and brimstone than talk about our relationships because it seems like i'm meddling <laughs> amen but our relationships are important because that's where our Christianity is lived out. And, and that's in our relationship with each other, our relationship with our family, our relationship with others, and our relationship with God. Amen. I, I'm not known, and I, I'm not known as a Christian based on my experience. I'm not known as a Christian based on what I believe. I'm not known as a Christian based on my title. Amen. I'm known as a Christian, I hope, based on the fruit that I bear. Amen. We're all known by the fruit that we bear. And the fruit's really seen the most right after a storm. Amen. But for years, Hollywood has been teaching us this myth that many have grabbed a hold of and embraced and that is that if i just find the right person i will live happily ever after that's why some people have been married five six seven times and because if i just find the right person i'll live happily ever after now all of us that have walked down that aisle thinking we were going to live happily ever after found out oh boy is that's not how it works amen the fact is that even the best of relationships has its ups and downs. Even the best of relationships go through trials and storms. We're not happy all the time, no matter what the relationship. That includes our relationship with God. Remember, this relationship we're talking about, the nine secrets of healthy relationship, refers to each other, to our, our family, and to God. Now, everybody here, if you're honest, knows you have been mad at God at some point, right? Am I the only one? Okay. So let me, but here's a big surprise for some of y'all that you may not realize that if you're still striving because society has given you this myth is, if you're married, you're married to a human being that's imperfect. Amen. If you're trying to be friends with somebody, okay, you're friends with somebody that's imperfect. And if you're trying to have a relationship with God, you are imperfect. Amen. So, glory. We have our bad days. We get sick. We argue. I call it the 5% day. And praise God, I did something I shouldn't have ever done, and I was getting paid more than I ever deserved. That's why I got that nice house on Main Street. Amen. Praise God for it. But I run my mouth, and I should have got fired. It's in San Jose, California. I didn't act like a Christian. Let's just put it that way. And a few minutes later, about 30 to 45 minutes later, that boss called me in the office, and I knew I was fixing to have a one-way ticket back to Texas without a job. 
And he said, Monty, I want you to know that I believe in the 5% day or you'd be fired today. <laughs> What's a 5% day, sir? It's what you just did. You're just having a bad day for some reason. Don't let it happen again. Your 5%'s up. <laughs> Amen. Life's not a constant honeymoon. Things happen. Praise God that this boss had the wisdom given to him by God to give me another chance. Now, you know when it's going to be a bad day, right? Everybody in here knows, you know. Sprocket, you know it's going to be a really bad day if for some reason you happen to be a little bit too close to the banditos and your motorcycle horn goes off and it won't go, it goes on and it don't go back off. Amen. <laughs> that's not, a, that's probably not a good day. It would be interesting. You know, it's, <laughs> you know, it's probably going to be a bad day if your twin sister has forgotten your birthday. <laughs> you know, it's Barry. Well, no, Barry, don't. Let's see who, uh, somebody in here it's going to pertain to. You know, it's going to be a really bad day when you bite into a steak and your teeth stay in it. You know, it's really going to be a bad day when you sneeze and your teeth come out. Y'all remember Russell? He sneezed and he caught his teeth. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> they were pulling over, pulling over. Like, What's wrong? He goes, ah. <laughs> praise God. I think if he hadn't caught those, that's like a $3,000 mistake or a sneeze, whatever. Oh. You know it's going to be a bad day when you wake up and discover that your water bed is broke. And then you realize you don't own a water bed. <laughs> you know it's going to be a bad day when you put your clothes on backwards and they fit better. All right. Well, everybody's awake. Praise God. Whenever we look, for relationships, whether it's in a marriage or with one another, some type of friendship, we say, I just want to be happy. That's common. There's nothing wrong with being happy. We say we just want to be happy. But what we really need in a relationship is joy. And unfortunately, the world has tried to tell us that joy and happiness is the same thing. But joy is very much different. There's this thing called destination disease. We think that if we can just get to that point, we'll be happy. But just like when you ride, it's not about the destination, although babes is a great place to go. <laughs> but it is the journey. And, and the longer the ride, the better. Amen. Our life is the same way. It's not the destination. Yeah, everybody knows their destination. Is everybody in here? Is there anybody who hasn't given their life to the Lord? That's an altar call. Anybody don't know Jesus? Then you know your destination. Amen. It's the journey. That's what it's about. It's our journey. Amen. But we, but we've been, we, we've been sold this destination disease. We, we, we're always thinking, if I can just get to this, I'll be happy. If I just re receive this, I'll be happy. After drastic changes in our lives, whatever it is that we, we may think will bring happiness. Maybe we walk away from a relationship thinking that will make us happy. Some of y'all can relate to that. Maybe you quit a decent job thinking it's going to be better. Grass is green on the other side, right? So is the water bill. It's, it's higher on the other side. Some of us switch careers. Whatever it is we do, build a, build a, a new house or buy a new car. Maybe even get a promotion. But here's the thing. We still have to live with yourself. And what happens is there's always a honeymoon. There's always a honeymoon period of these things, and then it dies out. And I don't care what you own. I don't care what you've bought or what you're building or who you're with. There is a honeymoon season that dies out. And then the happiness dies out. See, joy won't. Joy won't. The word, in fact, nowhere, nowhere in the Bible does God advise us to pursue happiness. Now, the word happiness is only used 22 times in the Bible, 6 in the New Testament and 16 in the Old Testament. And the word that happiness 
for happiness, it's used. It's not the happy that we have perceived it to be or that we've been taught by society it is. What it really means is this, blessed or favored by God. Amen. Can we be blessed in a storm? Yes. Can we be blessed when things are not going well? Yes. Amen. Happiness, no. But joy, yes. That's the happiness that the word is talking about, which is joy. Happiness is vulnerable. We're setting ourselves up for failure. If, we, if, we, if our happiness is wrapped up into a person, they're going to let us down. Is there anybody here never been let down by a person? Come on now. Happiness centered in possessions. It, it's sure to die off. You might have the, the biggest and greatest whatever, but later on, a few years later, you might even still be making notes on it. You looking for something else new? Somebody need to hear that. Happiness based on health. Now, I hate, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but listen. The minute you're born, you start dying. <laughs> We're in a broken world. Nobody's living forever in this flesh suit, this dirt suit. Amen? We used to. You can thank Adam and Eve for that. But we don't anymore. So, and there's people that do this. They, their, their happiness is in their health. You can't be happy when you're hurting, when you're sick, when you're ill. But you can have joy. Everything we build our happiness on won't work. Okay? So we're going to look at happiness and we're going to look at joy. Because joy comes from the Spirit of God. Happiness is external, but joy comes from God, and it's internal. It works from the inside out. If you have the Holy Spirit, and if you've given your life to the Lord, and everybody has, or you lied when I had you, come up here, amen? So you have God in here, the Holy Spirit's in here, then joy is inside. It's not an external thing. Happiness is always temporary. I don't care what it is. Temporary is a relative term. It could be one day, it could be a year, it could be, but it is temporary. But joy, it's not. It's permanent. It's always there. Because once you have the Holy Spirit, it's there. Amen. You can quench it. We'll get to that. Happiness is based on chance, but joy is a choice. <laughs> Don't it, isn't it? Choice always comes up, doesn't it? Life is full of choices. Happiness is based on circumstances. But if only this went this way, or only if this person would do this, or if I could just do that. That's not how it works, though. With joy, joy is in Christ. <laughs> and Christ is always with us no matter what we go through. Amen? Amen. Listen, this is, a, this is a huge secret. We all need to look at this. We need to, we need to, we need to dwell on it. We need to apply it to our lives. Because <clears throat> I know even after preaching, this is, I think, my third time preaching this message, I have times mixed up happiness and joy and i'll find myself unhappy trying to get and realize man this man wake up money amen I, so you know it's easy to say it's not always easy to do but joy can overtake amen, amen. satan doesn't want you to listen to this message <clears throat> he's 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 trying to keep people from coming to to hear the message <clears throat> He's going to do everything he can to keep you, because he wants you to be unhappy. And he wants you to believe that happiness is the answer. Amen? Now, there's three relationship killjoys that we're going to discuss. And almost any time, I'm going, you know, almost any time that you have a problem in your relationship with God, each other, or your family, it's going to be one of these three things. Guaranteed. And the first one, <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to say, there you go, meddling. Selfishness will kill your joy. Satan wants you to be selfish. Selfishness, it's real, it's real simple. If you don't know what selfishness is, it says, I want what I want. I want what I want. I see this the most out of people that I never thought would be selfish when, when there's a loved one that's gone on to be with Jesus. And then the families are quarreling over something. But I wanted that. And you see the mature ones because the mature ones, they roll over even though they should have kept it and gave it to the selfish one that doesn't have joy in their heart. And even though they received that item, whatever it was, 
they still didn't stay happy. We're right back to what I was talking about. You get this? It's a shame. James 4, 1 and 2. Uh, <clears throat> Where do all the fights and quarrels among you come from? They come from your desires for pleasure, which are constantly fighting within you. You want things, but you cannot have them, so you are ready to kill. You strongly desire things, but you cannot get them, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have what you want, because you do not ask God for it. Amen. If you go to ask God for a material item, God will put you into check if you're really praying from the Spirit. Lord, I'd just love to have a, uh, well, Lord, I'd just love, well, I'd, I'd love to have a better relationship with you. Amen. You see, the root problem of many relationships is because of one or sometimes both are selfish. For a lot of us to solve our relationship problems, and there's people in here that are hearing this and people watching the video that have relationship issues, you're not going to like it. But to solve that problem is real simple. Grow up and stop being so selfish. Is that my opinion? Well, the Word of God in James 3.16 says, For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every kind of evil. Amen. Did you ever notice that, and we talked about it during Bible study, that things just keep adding up? They get, you know, the selfishness brings on other sins. Selfishness is a sin. You're self-centered instead of wanting to serve. So we won't be joyful if we're jealous. You can't do both. What I'm trying to say is Satan wants you to feel, he wants you to be for yourself. He wants you to want, and he brings that to you. We need to get a focus off ourselves. I can look back and see lots of times when, yeah, there were storms in my relationship with my family because I was being selfish. It was real simple. Amen, it happens. The second thing is resentment. Resentment. What is resentment? Well, resentment says, I won't forgive you. I won't forgive you. You know, the Word tells us if you go to the altar to pray and you haven't forgiven somebody, stop what you're doing and go back and go, go do what you've got to do. Amen? Amen? Or you won't be forgiven. See, we hurt each other in relationships because we're not perfect. Sometimes it's intentional, but most of most of the time, a lot of times, it's unintentional when we hurt somebody with something we said or something we did. But what you do with that hurt makes a difference. We've all been hurt, but it's what do you do with it. It goes right along with the, the Bible study bait of Satan because we all take offense. Nothing destroys a relationship faster than resentment. I will never forgive you. Anybody in here ever have a friend hurt him? church member a church family and people come here and, and they want to they're looking for a new church because they've been hurt from where they came from because they won't forgive whoever hurt them but you got to let it go you have to let it go because you're wallowing in misery amen hebrews 12 15 living bible says watch out that no bitterness takes root among you. For as it springs up, it causes deep trouble, hurting many in their spiritual lives. Amen. See, resentment eats up emotional energy, and you can't be happy, and you can't find the joy that you need if you have resentment in your lives. Instead of realizing that, uh, th that the other person is another person of the flesh and imperfect, we've placed them on a pedestal. We've built a relationship on happiness, and now we're using our emotions. And so we won't forgive them for what they've done or said. If you hold on to resentment long enough, you could eventually find yourself with nothing. With nothing. I, I mean, you could run off your own family. Have you ever been around somebody that has so much resentment that's all they ever talk about? Yes. They run you off. 
And then they run somebody else off. And they run somebody else off. Because that's all they talk about is how they've been hurt by somebody else. And they, they just want to tell everybody about it. <clears throat> and that's resentment. It's so hard for them to let it go that they will actually end up alone. That's not my opinion. Proverbs 11.29 says, The fool who provokes his family to anger and resentment will finally have nothing worthwhile left. Nothing. No friends, no relationships, just nothing. That's how important it is to let it go. And when you let it go, you'll feel the joy. Amen? So in other words, if you, forget, if you, if you refuse to forgive, you're only hurting yourself. Resentment steals your joy. And the last one, <clears throat> fear. We know fear is not of God. Fear comes from the devil. Okay? Fear is of the devil. Satan wants you to fear so he can destroy your joy. And fear says, <clears throat> I don't trust you anymore. I don't trust you. When fear builds up in your life, the joy goes out and your relationship is hurt badly. Yeah, it comes to an end. Have you ever said, hurt me once, shame on you, hurt me twice, shame on me? <clears throat> I've said that a bunch because I don't trust somebody. Because you're saying, I don't trust you. Amen? Now, <clears throat> you have to have a balance here. You don't, don't take these words and just say, well, I'll trust everything from now on. If you co-signed on something for somebody and they left you hanging, you'd be an idiot to co-sign for them again. Okay? <clears throat> Are you listening to me? <clears throat> if somebody really hurts you in a relationship... You need to forgive them. You need to be friends. But you may not want to trust them in the same situations anymore. Okay, there's, there's, there, there is a balance here. But when you just straight up won't trust, period, because you've been hurt, that's a bad thing. And that's what happens. A lot of people get hurt by somebody else, and then they put up this barrier, and they won't trust a, a brand new person. They'll come to a new church, and they won't let their wall down. They just, they're in, and then they're back, and then they take off because they've been hurt. And so they have no trust. They don't want to trust anybody because they don't want to be hurt. So what's happened? Your joy has been stolen. Satan's won the battle. You're going through the, you're going through the, the, the motions. You're going to church. You're sliding in, and then you're sliding back out, but you're not getting into a relationship because you don't want to be hurt because you don't have any trust. Somebody needs to hear this. If you're not in here, you're watching it. Amen. You've got to trust. Amen. The nine secrets of healthy relationships. Some people have been hurt by individuals. Some have been hurt by organizations. Some have been hurt by churches. But you, you can't find that joy if you don't start trusting again. Amen. Uh, 1 John 4.18 <clears throat> New King James. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. <clears throat> amen. Amen. Fearful people cannot give love and cannot receive love. That's a shame. So we have to bind that up. Amen. Fear does three things to relationships. Fear makes us defensive. So we won't admit it when we're wrong. It makes us distant. Like I was explaining, we, we won't share our real feelings. We won't share our emotions at all to a lot, depending on how bad we've been hurt. And fear makes us demanding. What that means is that we must be in control. We're, we're going to be in control if there's going to be any type of relationship. So these three things that we talked about, selfishness, resentment, and fear, these three things, these basic things right here, interfere with our relationship with one another, with family, and for sure with God. Amen. Most people try to do something to bring happiness into a troubled relationship. But that's just a temporary solution. What we got to have is joy, and it's from the inside. Again, I can't emphasize enough. <clears throat> it's kind of like um, chocolate. <laughs> yeah. 
I can't, I can't explain to you how good it is. You just got to taste it. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Joy in a relationship doesn't come from receiving. It comes from giving. Amen. That's the upside down kingdom of God, man. <clears throat> because, listen, we are wired in the flesh. We are wired to receive. In the flesh, we want to receive. Amen. But the Holy Spirit rewires us and we want to give. Now, you know, again, if you've experienced this, north and south are permitted or even an amen. <clears throat> but when you give and you feel that joy, and you, that's because you've been rewired by the Holy Spirit. Because in the flesh, we want to, we want to, we want, we want, we want to receive. Amen. Acts 20, 35, it says, remember that our Lord Jesus said, more blessings come from giving than from receiving. <clears throat> and a lot of us have experienced that. The first key to joy in a relationship is you got to get your focus on somebody else instead of yourself. Amen. You know, the, one of the problems in our relationships as they grow is we don't put as much emphasis to maintaining the relationship as we did when we started the relationship. You know, like the boy, boyfriend, girlfriend, and all the dating and courting and all. <clears throat> one man put it this way. When I used to come home, my wife brought me slippers and my dog come a-barking. Now when I come home, the dog brings me slippers and my wife comes a barking. <clears throat> so we just don't work real hard at maintaining that relationship. See, joy doesn't come from making me happy. Joy comes from making other people happy. <clears throat> God designed it that way. One popular myth says that when I get all my problems solved in this relationship, I'll be happy then you're never going to be happy. There's always going to be another problem. If you're always looking forward to solving a problem so that you can be happy, it's going to be short-lived. Amen. you got to learn to have joy, even in the storms, even in the middle of problems. And I, I want... Be, being... If you've got true joy, then depression's out. Amen. It's out. It doesn't, it's, it can't be there if you've got true joy. Yes, he, he sure does. Joe, I put that post on there. You know, a pastor killed himself the other day. The pastor from Temple killed himself. Depressed. <clears throat> Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Now, it didn't say rejoice in the Lord when things are going your way. It didn't say rejoice in the Lord when everything's okay. It didn't say rejoice in the Lord because you're happy. It said rejoice in the Lord when? Always, always. Who wrote that? You know, you look at that and you're like, wait a minute. You know, this guy must have it made. Must have had it made to write something like this because, man, this, you know, life ain't a cakewalk. Rejoice always. Well, the guy that wrote it was Paul. And Paul wrote it to the Philippians while he was in prison, man. You know, he's got open sores all over him from being uh, uh, scourged. And he's in prison. And we say prison, you all think of bars and somebody watching TV. That ain't what was going on, okay? This guy was lucky to live from day to day. And he says, rejoice. He wrote this to the Philippian church. Rejoice. <laughs> that puts it into context, don't it? Glory to God. That's true joy. I want to encourage you, if you're, if, if, you, if you're going through some storms, we're, we're fixing to pray, and then we're going to have potluck. It's a great time for fellowship and edification, lifting one another up in word, in prayer, sharing, okay? That, that's, that's what the body's about. Amen. No one should leave today depressed. No one should leave today letting whatever your worries are keep you heavy on your heart. You need to have joy. We need to pray for one another on that, amen? amen. And apply it. And keep your ears open for other family or friends that may be dealing with something so you can bring joy to them by giving. Father God, we thank you again for a short and powerful message from the series, The Nine Secrets of Healthy Relationships, Lord. I just pray each and every one of us has received it the way you want us to and that we apply it to our lives and we leave today bringing glory to you as we share this in our own way with others that need to know about the joy of having you in us. It's in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.